In 79 CE, the Vesuvius volcano erupted and burned down two beautiful cities of the Roman Empire, Pompeii and Herculaneum. Many of you have probably heard about this tragic story. However, few people know that in the middle of the 18th century, archaeologists discovered ancient scrolls from that time amongst the ruins of Herculaneum. For any scientist or historian, such a discovery is a treasure trove that offers insights into the thoughts and lives of people from over 2,000 years ago. However, the problem was that 1,800 scrolls were found in very poor condition. Singed by the heat of the volcano, coated in ash and soot, they had become hardened black lumps. Brittle as coal, any careless movement could destroy them. Scientists were aware that invaluable knowledge from an ancient Roman library was concealed within and endeavored to decipher the texts. One method was to cut the scrolls in half and scrape off the thin layers of solid dust and ashes. Then, the researchers created a special machine that could slowly unroll the scrolls. They managed to read a few words, but unfortunately, such methods damaged and even destroyed some of the artifacts. In those instances, archaeologists could only wait for advancements in technology that would allow them to unfold and read the scrolls. And finally, this day has arrived. Artificial intelligence has now enabled researchers to decipher texts written 2,000 years ago. Even though the inscriptions on the scrolls were charred and nearly illegible, Initially, scientists scanned the scrolls and created high-resolution digital models. This process allowed specialists to identify the areas where ancient ink had altered the texture and shape of the papyrus fibers. In the regions where ink was applied, the papyrus was slightly thicker and contained a higher level of carbon, the key component of the ink. The researchers developed a machine learning model capable of detecting these subtle details within the papyrus. They uploaded thousands of 3D images of the scrolls to the internet, inviting people to collaborate with AI in decoding the text. During the early stages, the system occasionally made errors, making human assistance essential. To incentivize participation, scientists and investors from Silicon Valley offered $1 million to anyone who could successfully decode the texts. This initiative significantly accelerated the process, resulting in the deciphering of several passages from the ancient works. Fragments of the first transcripts are like a blog about how to enjoy life. The author of the scroll, Philodemus, was a follower of the Greek philosopher Epicurus, who considered pleasure and luxury the highest goal in his life. So, Philodemus thought so too. We do not right away believe things that are scarce to be absolutely more pleasant than those which are abundant. It feels as if it was written by some modern influencer talking about a detox program or a diet. It seems that people who lived 2,000 years ago were almost the same as modern ones. Philodemus was apparently a wealthy man because he lived in a villa that may have belonged to Julius Caesar's father-in-law in his works, the author criticized the Stoics, who couldn't say anything about pleasure at all. Philodemus was such an ardent fan of Epicureanism that one of the scientists compared him to a guy who collected albums from only one band and nothing else. Several hundred Herculaneum scrolls remain unread. Scientists believe that they may contain works by Aristotle, Homer, Sophocles, and the Stoics. Fortunately, with modern AI technologies, the decryption process will go on much faster. But how did historians and linguists decipher ancient texts in the past centuries? It was actually a very difficult mental job. Let's say you found an ancient slab in the 19th century somewhere in Greece. To understand what was written there, you'd have to compare it to several other deciphered plates with similar writings of that era or similar languages. Letter by letter, symbol by symbol, you'd be deciphering ancient writings for several months or even years to figure out, say, the recipe for ancient mashed potatoes. Fortunately, with the development of computer technology, those days are long gone. Now, all ancient scrolls can be scanned and uploaded to a database on a computer. 
You may not even have to decipher the text for a long time if the computer finds a match of characters in other ancient manuscripts. But even if you have a perfectly preserved piece of papyrus or an ancient book where all letters are visible, this doesn't mean that you and AI will be able to decipher it. One of the most famous encrypted texts is the Voynich Manuscript. This work, which consists of 240 colorful pages, was acquired by Polish bookseller in 1912. He found that book intriguing because of astrological symbols, unknown plants, and unusual human figures drawn on its pages. And all this was accompanied by handwritten texts. The author had beautiful, clear handwriting, but the language of the book is still unknown. Someone wrote this art book around the beginning of the 15th century and divided it into six sections devoted to botany, astronomy, biology, cooking, medicine, and cosmology. Many scientists and linguists have tried to decipher the mysterious drawings with inscriptions, but no one has gotten reliable results. Even AI couldn't help this difficult task. Some believe that this book is dedicated to science and others believe that it contains knowledge about witchcraft. Perhaps it's a mix of science and magic. According to one version, the manuscript is a medical textbook that copied information from other scientific works from the Middle Ages. Before the invention of the printing press, people copied books and rewrote them by hand without worrying about copyrights. It's possible that the author of the manuscript outlined all their knowledge about herbal medicines and the influence of astrology on health. People in the past believed that the state of the body and stars in the sky were connected. The coolest thing is that the book has been scanned. You can download it in high resolution and try to decrypt it yourself. Who knows, maybe you will succeed and get some ancient secret knowledge. An unknown language or poor text condition may not always be a problem for linguists. Imagine that you open some copy of classical literature dated to the 19th century. You read the pages carefully, and at the end of the day, you feel slightly unwell. You read the book every day and feel worse and worse. At some point, you go to the hospital and doctors tell you that you've been poisoned. Yeah. Sometimes working with old books can be literally dangerous for your health. There are even catalogs of poisonous books in the world. They are toxic not because someone intentionally sprayed them with poison to hurt the reader, but because people wanted to make books look more colorful. Recently, two such books have been withdrawn from the National Library of France because of their bright green covers. The pages were ordinary, but the hardcover could have been coated with arsenic. The mass production of books took place in the 19th century. Book publishers wanted to release as many copies as possible, so they used not expensive leather covers for them, but cheaper fabric options. To make a book attractive to customers, they painted them in bright green, yellow, red, and other colors. They got the green color of the cover thanks to the bright pigment created from copper and arsenic. It was a very cheap dye but brighter than other dyes containing copper carbonate. An arsenic dye was used not only for books, but also to create candles and wallpaper. The problem was that the dye's pigment decomposed quickly and released toxic carcinogenic fumes. Arsenic caused severe health problems. People calmly lived in their homes and couldn't understand what was happening to them. The same thing happened to many readers of that time. It was only by the end of the 19th century that people stopped selling toxic items. Now, to read a poisonous book, if you want to do it that is, you have to wear gloves and a protective mask. And after work, wash your hands thoroughly. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.